Today it's all about the best rated beauty tools, cheap versus expensive edition. Let's start first with dermaplaning tools. We have one to one. This one right here is by Stacked Skincare, $75 for this right here versus the, what is this? The Tinkle, 80 cents. This is reusable. The Stacked skin, Skincare, they're saying use it up to once a week, replace once a month. And then you replace these little blades, I believe three of them, $22. Very expensive. expensive. And then these right here, Tinkle, they come in a pack of six for, they're $4.90. So if you divide that, they're around 80 cents per blade. Let's see if there's actually a huge difference or not. Whoa. Sounds like a legit, just a straight edge razor. <laughs> Already sounds so different because this blade is very different in comparison to the Tinkle. This looks and sounds very intimidating. I'm gonna be honest, just from the first impression, you get way closer to your face with this blade. Oh man, oh that's smooth. <laughs> that is smooth. Now let's go over to the Tinkle side because I kind of want to do one to one right away. And you can see the peach fuzz right there. You can definitely see the peach fuzz coming off. You definitely have to be careful, I would say. This one feels a lot more rough just because of those ridges. It's literally like a bread knife versus a straight edge razor. But it does a pretty good job, I will say. I feel like I have to go back a little bit more with this one versus the stacked skincare because it's so smooth. I just want to feel a difference. They both feel very smooth. This one feels a little more irritated. The tinkle, yeah. Just because you can feel the little serrated edges. Interesting. Okay, let's continue. Ooh, did you guys see that fall? All right, so this is what the face is looking like after dermaplaning. I think it looks pretty good on both sides. You can see a little bit of inflammation right here. I nicked myself using the tinkle. I think my cheeks look a little more irritated on the left side, my cheek, versus on the right side. It just looks a little more even. Like this one, you can see it's a little bit more red. This is just so expensive. $75, then an extra 24 just for the blades. We we're saying they, sh they, they should have at least had three to four extra blades with the $75 purchase. I feel like usually if you're purchasing something replaceable, there is at least one or two extra, you know, like even in, when you're buying razors for yourself, it comes with two to three free razors on top of your, your handle that you're paying for essentially. So I don't like the price for this. I do like how it works. Very expensive, still gets the job done. You just gotta be a little more careful. All right, we're next down to tweezers. These are essential everyday, weekly, monthly staple items that I always keep right here. So one brand that I really enjoy is Tweezer Man. This is the one I have on hand. I can't live without it. It's my little bad boy. These right here, these Tweezer Man, these are the ultra precision tips. $35, really highly rated, versus the Revlon is just their expert tweezer with a slant tip, $4.99. Tweezer Man, it's a little more slant, it's a little more, th like thin, it's a little more slim. They both look very even <laughs> in terms of how thick they are. I'm just excited to see if there's gonna be a huge difference. Is it gonna get those really stubborn, like blonde hairs, the stubborn hairs that I can't get out? Let's just try it, let's go for it. Keep it to the right side with the expensive versus cheap. Okay, got one. Nope. Two, 
All right, so for tweezers, what do we look for? Something that's not as painful, that actually grabs most of the hairs. Obviously, it's not gonna grab the tiniest little hairs. Tweezers, that's not what they're gonna do. You have to get a wax. I will say the tweezer man, it wasn't as painful to remove the hairs as the Revlon, but they both did a very similar very similar job. And if you're just gonna pick between one, I would go for the Revlon. I think Tweezerman has better options. For example, like I showed you guys, my little mini ones, $15. They're great, they do a phenomenal job and they do better than the Revlon in my opinion because they are so much smaller and they're a little slimmer. Therefore you can get those really tiny hairs and you can be more precise with something like this. But Revlon, great tool, it gets the job done. Yes, you do have to go a couple of times over certain hairs to really make sure you get it out. But at the end of the day, it gets the job done and it's only $4.99. We have the beauty sponge. We have the OG Beauty Blender, $20 versus these right here. It comes in a pack of 10, multiple different colors, $6.99, so each 70 cents. $20 versus 70 cents, beauty sponge. This right here with the difference, you can see the size, they're both damp. You can see how much smaller the beauty blender is to the beauty sponge from Amazon. The beauty sponge, the beauty blender, it's very, it's very airy, it's very bouncy, it's very light and it's more perforated versus this one is very dense, it's heavier, it's not as bouncy. So we'll see which one does a better job. Let's go for it. Let's apply my Fenty Beauty, my Ease Drop. Okay, we'll start first with the right side, which is the Beauty Blender. We'll see how much coverage we will get and how it spreads the product. Again, this is just, it's a, it's a bouncy product. It definitely soaks up the product because it is very perforated <laughs> sponge, but it blends in really nicely, very fast, very seamlessly. You don't really have to try too hard. All right, that's on, very easy to use. It gave me a solid coverage, nice light coverage. Let's go on with the Amazon sponge. I'm trying to take similar amount. We're gonna take the more flat side. I like how big it is. <laughs> yeah, it definitely kind of picks up the product. Look at the difference on both sides. You can see where it kind of picks it up and it stays there versus the Beauty Blender, it kind of distributes the product a little more even though you can see where it eats the product up. I think this one eats up a lot more product which is fascinating because it's so much more dense but I do like how it feels on the skin. It's very soft. It's still very bouncy. I think these are great. It's just you have to use a little bit more product than you would with the Beauty Blender. Okay, so I personally see a difference from one side to the other with the finish and the coverage and whatever else. So on the right side, it honestly looks very even from the forehead to the cheeks to the jaw. Yes, there's still redness because this product right here, it's not a super full coverage. It's not even a medium coverage. It's a very light coverage product. Like I'm looking at the cheeks right here versus on this side, everything just looks a little more even versus this. There's a little bit of more coverage right here, a little less coverage right here, kind of inconsistent with the coverage. Let's try concealer now. I'm just using my NARS Radiant Creamy. Go over some of these spots and we'll see how it's gonna blend out. First go in with the Beauty Blender. I like that with the Beauty Blender, it doesn't feel wet when it's damp. Other sponges, you can still feel like it's super wet and you can't get rid of that wetness because they are so dense. You can see right here, very easy to blend. It still gives you good coverage, but it helps to kind of stretch the product out. And it's really nice, this sponge right here, this shape because you can get into your inner corner really easily. It's not big and it's not too small. Let's go with this one right here. We're gonna use the pointy side. Still feels really nice. You can see right here, I kind of have to dab a little bit more. It's not spreading the product as evenly and as fast as the Beauty Blender. You can see it right there. It's just, you know, just work it a little bit more. This sponge is actually really, really nice. It's really soft, it's really bouncy, but I will say it does eat up a little bit more product. Personally, I think the right side looks a little better. It looks more flawless, more even, especially right here. I feel like on this side, you can kind of see where some of the concealer is kind of stuck and it doesn't want to move. Right in here in this area, you can see a difference. But again, it's very minute differences, you know what I mean? You can always, you can always fix it. 
this does a job. It gets the job done. It looks good. You know what I mean? What else do you want, you know? Eyebrow brushes. This one right here is a well-loved. This is my original. <laughs> this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills number 12 brush. It is angled brush with a spoolie on the other end. We picked up a newer one. We're comparing it to the e.l.f. This is their eyebrow duo brush. It's $4 and you can see the spoolie on one end and then you have the angled brush on the other end. The one thing I'm noticing right away is the difference in the brush itself, the angled brush. The Anastasia is a little more slim, but it's also a little more stiff. <laughs> That's the word, stiff. So that way you can get really precise brush strokes versus the e.l.f. It's more of an angled eyeliner brush where it's not as stiff. It's still very soft, but it's not as stiff as the Anastasia. But you know what? Let's try it. Let's put those brow brows on and see which one we can create more hair-like strokes with. And I'm using the Anastasia Medium Brow pow Brow Powder Duo. <laughs> so let's take the spoolie, brush this through, and we'll see how precise and how easy it is to use a pencil like this or brush versus the other brush. This brush is so fine that it kind of just does the job for me. As long as I hold it in the right place, it does a really great job. Especially if I want to be precise and really carve out these brows. Spoolie seems great with the e.l.f. I feel like with this one you get more of like a diffused look, which is totally fine. Yeah, because it's not as stiff, it's definitely more of like an eyeliner brush, not more so eyebrow, just because it's a little more thick and it's the bristles are very soft, but it still gets a job done. So this product right here, I will say, you can see a huge difference in application and overall usage of a product like this. It's just so, I feel it's a lot more user friendly because the brush and the Anastasia is so fine and it's so precise. Let me show you in the back of my hand. I'll take the darkest shade and just show you. Like you can be pretty fine with this. And you can, you have, I feel like a little bit more control versus on this one right here. You see how diffused it looks? Versus this one, you can have a little bit more hair-like strokes. You can be a little bit more precise with a brush like this. It all comes down with how thin and how stiff the bristles are. So both of these are great brushes. I feel like you can use them for different things. Personally, if you're using like a pomade gel product, definitely go for the Anastasia. You have way more control. You can do a lot more things with a product like this versus this one right here. But at the end of the day, it just depends on what kind of outcome you're looking for. All right, last but not least, eyelash curlers. There are so many of them. But this right here is by Hourglass, $30 versus Wet n Wild, and this retails for $2.99. It's actually on sale right now for $1.90. <laughs> Crazy high reviews on both of them. The one thing I'm noticing right away with both eyelash curlers, how much more open you can get the Wet n Wild versus the Hourglass. That's fully open. And this is why I don't use this one all the time. I actually don't like this as much as I like my other like Shiseido, my Surratt, my Kevin Aquan eyelash curlers. I feel like they do a better job, but I'm really excited to try the Wet n Wild and see which one gets a better curl. How close can we get it to the tips or just the base of my lashes? Which one is more comfortable? Which one I feel like is not going to take all of my eyelashes out, you know? <laughs> Basically. So let's go for it. Taking the hourglass, and because it is so slim, you kind of have to Curve it down towards your eyes and then have, look down. Kind of get in there. I will say this right here, the side, it's like poking. Do you see that right there? Yes, it did, but you can see that it didn't get to the base. Like it kind of cut them and then it curled them. Do you see that? You can see the outer one. It like curled it like halfway on the eyelash. Wet and wild. 
you can see you don't have to like really do too much very gentle and just start curling this one it's not pinching as hard on this side same thing with the outer lash I feel like the hourglass did a little bit better of a job. You can see where it pinched right there. Some of these lashes that they didn't even want to get curled, but you can see a huge difference. I feel like this one's a little more even and consistent throughout from the inner to the outer lash versus this side. They're a little more curled in the center and then they're not as curled on the outer lash. Let's put on some mascara and then we'll curl them one last time when the mascara has dried. All right, so with eyelash curlers, I feel like it's a really personal preference because everybody has such a different eye shape. So personally for me, I like an eyelash curler that's not as curved. This one right here is by Surratt Beauty. And I really like this one because it's not as curved as typical eyelash curlers. You can see, you can see right here. You can see it's a little bit more straight versus the Wet n Wild. It's definitely very curved. So with this one, I find that I can get really close to the base of my lashes and really have that consistent look. But between these two right here, the Hourglass and the Wet n Wild, honestly go for the Wet n Wild. They do a very similar job, but if I'm comparing them to something like the Surratt Beauty, the Surratt Beauty wins in my opinion. So there you guys have it. At the end of the day, expensive products are sometimes a lot of the times are not better. A lot of these products you saw in front of you today, they perform just as great as the expensive products and they save you a lot of money in the future. But there are some products that do, in my opinion. I think they are worth every single penny because they are a lot more convenient, they do a better job, and overall the quality will last you more than the cheaper product. I, I love these kind of comparison videos because you can really see one to one and really see, is there really a difference? I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you for watching, spending time with me, and I'll see you in the next one very soon. Bye. Got lipstick all over my hand. <laughs>